Hello and welcome to the episode 35 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today's highlights include a couple of goodbyes, some fans put to good use, and a curious exchange. On the 4th of February 1961, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, performed at the Latham Hall in Liverpool for yet another BK Promotions night. In 1962, the Beatles, still with Pete Best on drums, played at the Casbah Coffee Club in Liverpool. Let's move on with another familiar venue, but this time it is a special occasion. On this date in 1963, the Beatles performed their last lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Another goodbye in 1964. The Beatles had their last night of concerts at the Olympia Theatre in Paris, France. This concluded their residency, started on the 16th of January 1964 and detailed in episode 16 of What A Fab Day. On the 4th of February 1965, Paul McCartney and his girlfriend Jane Asher flew to Hammamet, Tunisia, for a 10-day holiday. They stayed as cultural guests at the villa owned by the British Embassy, for free. The villa was secluded enough for the couple to avoid unwanted attention by fans and press alike. Apparently, the acoustic of the bathroom was really good, so good that McCartney wrote his song Another Girl right there. And now, before moving forward, I have a question for you all. Would it be interesting if I regularly covered things that are indirectly connected to the Beatles, to explain you why they were significant cultural icons and big economic players? I tended to cover this socio-economic material en passant so far, but I would like to hear your opinion on it. So, please, let your voice be heard. Time to move to 1968. On this date, the Beatles were at the EMI Studios to record a new rhythm track for John Lennon's Across the Universe. Between 2.30 and 5.30 pm, the band recorded six takes, numbered 4 to 7. The previous version of the song had only two takes and so, for some reason, no take three ever existed. Anyhow, between 8 pm and 2 am, the band proceeded recording overdubs onto the rhythm track. During this second session, John and Paul decided that it would have been nice to have falsetto harmonies on the track. Naturally, it would have been really difficult to get professional female singers for the job at a late hour on a Sunday night, and so Paul stepped outside the building and invited two of their fans inside. It then came to happen that Lizzie Bravo, 16, and Galen Pease, 17, were the first fans to participate to a Beatles recording session. Once their Nothing's Gonna Change Our World lines were recorded, they were shown the door, and the Beatles proceeded recording four takes of 15-second humming sounds mixed together. A guitar played backwards, and a harp-like sound also played backwards. The hums and the guitar part were included in the rough mixdown of the song. The hard part, as well as takes of backward bass and drums, were instead discarded immediately. Finally, in 1970, John Lennon and Yoko Ono completed another publicity stunt, exchanging a bag of their hair for a pair of Muhammad Ali's bloodstained boxing shorts with black activist Michael De Freitas, also known as Michael X, Michael Abdul Malik, or Abdul Malik. As you might recall from episode 20 of What A Fab Day, John and Yoko had cut their hair really short on the 20th of January. The exchange happened on the rooftop of a building at the back of the Black Center in 95-99 Holloway Road in London. 
The idea was that both the boxing shorts and the hair had to be auctioned to raise money for the peace campaign, the Black Center, or other worth causes, but there is no indication that this really happened. The trio was interviewed by the press on the rooftop. This concludes another episode of What A Fab Day. I guess this was shorter than some other episode, but, as I said in the introduction, this podcast concentrates on facts, and if nothing much has happened on a given day, well, I can't just come up with rubbish, as some newspapers did back in the day. Anyhow, if you'd like to support this podcast, please visit www.simonmas.com support to find out what you can do. In the episode description, you will also find the link to the bibliography of the podcast. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.